Christopher West here, Theology of the Body Guy. Today we're going to talk about the fact that we are not spirits trapped in a body. We are a profound marriage of body and soul. True or false, man is a spiritual being. True or false, man has a spiritual nature. Most spiritually minded people would say true to both. But if you're thinking as a Catholic, we can't simply say that's true. Is it false? It at least needs some real clarification. Strictly speaking, we are not spiritual beings. Angels are spiritual beings. We, surprise, surprise, we are human beings. And human beings do not have a spiritual nature. Angels have a spiritual nature. Human beings have a human nature nature. Now, if I were to have said, are human beings spiritual or is human nature spiritual, we could certainly say yes to both of those. That's true, but incomplete. We are not merely spiritual. Human nature is the marriage of the spiritual and the physical. Tragically, today, most Christians themselves don't believe who we really are as human beings, as a marriage of the spiritual and the physical. We have largely been evangelized by our Gnostic culture. What the heck does that mean? Gnosticism is an ancient dualistic heresy. Dualism meaning it ruptures, it splits body and soul. And as such, it posits human identity in spirit and says we become human by escaping from the crudeness of matter through an enlightened spiritual knowledge. Gnosis, Gnosticism, means knowledge. And here, that kind of knowledge is quite literally death-dealing. What is the separation of body and soul? The very definition of it is death. Today's rampant split of body and soul comes from having been soaking in Rene Descartes' dictum for about 400 years, I think Therefore, I am. When we conceive of the human being as thought, right, then the body becomes something we think about, it becomes something we dissect, but it's no longer who I am. I become a thinking thing housed in human flesh. And eventually, Rene Descartes' dictum, I think, therefore, I am, becomes, I think, therefore, I am whatever I think I am. Our identity gets ruptured from the body. Indeed, we live in a culture today that demands in law that we identify every body without identifying any body. What happens when you try to identify somebody without reference to his or her body? You quite literally identify no body. Despite all this talk about identity in the modern world, the truth of the matter is we are becoming a culture of no bodies. The Catholic Church has always affirmed that the human being is some body. Christ, we must remember, as St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, is the savior of the body. He came not just to save souls, he came to redeem bodies. And this means that anybody who has ever felt like nobody can reclaim the truth that he or she is somebody, and this redemption is for everybody. The unity of body and soul is so profound, the Catechism says, that we have to consider the soul to be the form of the body. What does that mean? That's a term from scholastic theology that goes the whole way back to the philosophy of Aristotle. We can recognize this truth in as much as when the soul separates from the body at death, the body deforms. It is the soul that gives my body its form. I'll often tell my students to point to their soul, and they might put their hands on their hearts. Symbolically, I get it, but let me point to my soul. Here's my soul. It's the shape of my arm. It's the shape of my ear. It's the shape of my face. It's the shape. It's the form of my body, including my internal organs. It's what organizes my body, quite literally. The idea we have that when the soul separates from the body at death, the soul is liberated from the prison of the body, this is not a biblical idea. This is a platonic idea. 
In other words, it comes from the philosopher Plato. We have to recognize that when St. Paul says to live by the Spirit and not by the flesh, he's not saying spirit good, body bad. He's saying we must open our flesh to the indwelling of the Spirit. Because if the Spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, St. Paul says, then that same Spirit will give life to your mortal body also. Let me quote John Paul II directly. This means that the truth about man's destiny cannot be understood as a state of the soul alone, separated or, according to Plato, liberated from the body. But it must be understood as the definitively and perfectly integrated state of man brought about by a perfect union of the soul with the body. This is our destiny. We believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we really need to examine the way we think here. So often we have this idea of our bodies as a shell in which our real spiritual self dwells. I've done polls of priests who come to my events, and I've said, tell me, what would you guess? What is the percentage of parishioners, people who come to Mass on Sunday, who believe the body is a shell in which the soul dwells, and at death the soul is finally liberated from the prison of the body? The lowest percentage I've ever gotten from the priests is about 75%, and it's typically more like 90 or 95%. Let me put this in context. What these priests are telling us is that 90-ish percent of people who come to church on Sunday, these are the people you would think who actually care about these things. My brothers and sisters, if we want a spirituality that does not involve our bodies or the body of Christ, our spirituality is no longer Christian. It's Gnostic. If we are trying to live a spiritual life divorced from our bodies, do you know what we are? We're dead, because that's the definition of death, the rupture of body and soul. When we are intent on divorcing ourselves from our bodies, we can make zero sense of a God who is intent on wedding himself to the body. This is our faith. The spiritual God has taken on flesh so that we don't need to shed our skin to reach him. He has taken on our skin, taken on our flesh to reach us. I close with this thought from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The flesh is the hinge of damnation. What does your catechism say? That's not what it says. The flesh is the hinge of salvation. We believe in God who is creator of the flesh. We believe in the word made flesh in order to redeem the flesh. We believe in the resurrection of the flesh, the fulfillment of both the creation and the redemption of the flesh. Flesh, 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 flesh. The Christian message is we got to get in touch with our flesh. He saves our flesh through his flesh. My brothers and sisters, I could say so much more about this salvation of our flesh. And I do in the courses I teach for the Theology of the Body Institute. Click the link below to learn more about these courses. Click the other link to learn about becoming a member of our patron community, a community of men and women around the world who are taking this up, learning it, living it, and sharing it. If you've enjoyed this video, like it, share it, leave a comment, and also consider subscribing. Until next time, remember, you are redeemed flesh.